The learning objective of the topic is explain the relationship between trends in atomic properties of elements and electronic structure and periodicity. So what is periodicity? What atomic properties are we talking about? What trends we will see in those atomic properties? And how we will connect those trends with electronic structure as well as periodicity? The answer to all these questions will be done in this video. Hello everyone, this is topic 1.7, Periodic Trends from AP Chemistry College Board. So let's start. So this is how a periodic table looks like. You can see here that the elements are arranged according to their atomic numbers. The atomic numbers are written at the top of each element. You will see here this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. So here you, also, you can also see that there is another table at the bottom. This atomic number is 57 and the next atomic number written here is 72. So the, this atomic number you can see here it is 58. So actually this table comes at this position here after the 57 number and at the bottom after the 89 atomic number. So as the periodic table would be looking very long so that is why it is written separately and this separate table has lanthanides and actinides. These vertical columns are called as groups and the horizontal rows are called as periods. And in total, there are 18 groups and 7 periods. Now, here comes the answer to the question that why the elements are arranged like this in a periodic table. Here, instead of writing the elements, I have written their electronic configurations, but not the overall electronic configurations. I have written just the outermost shells electronic configurations. So if you see in the first group or first column, you will see that elements are having the outermost shell configuration as S1. And the second group, you can see that it is having S2. So this gives you the answer that why the elements are arranged like this in a periodic table apart from their atomic numbers. Because the first group has S1, second group has S2, and then this block has, or you can say, D orbitals filled, and this block has P orbitals filled. Now this part of the periodic table is called as P block, this block is called as the D block elements, and this block is called the F block elements. These elements are called the S block elements. Now what is periodicity? Periodicity is a regular periodic variation of properties of elements with atomic number and position in the periodic table. So periodicity as the word means that there is something coming after a certain time again. So if I'm talking about the first column, first column has elements as hydrogen, lithium, sodium and so on. So hydrogen, after hydrogen, there is one other element comes which is helium and then comes lithium. But still hydrogen and lithium have the similar properties. Similarly for lithium, after lithium, there are some other elements also, but Lithium has shared the similar properties as sodium also. So these properties of the elements are affected by four factors. The first factor is position in periodic table. Second factor is Coulomb's law. If you want to know more about Coulomb's law, shielding effect as well as effective nuclear charge, you can watch the topic 1.5 from my channel. And I'll just give you a brief about these three terms. So Coulomb's law actually tells that how much is the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons as nucleus has protons which are positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged. So there is some attraction between these positive and negative charges which is actually defined by Coulomb's law. Third factor is shielding effect. Shielding effect is due to the core electrons. If I'm talking about this element, which is oxygen, oxygen has a nucleus, which has eight protons. Then it has two electrons in the core shell. And then there are six electrons in the outermost shell. Now in shielding, what happens is this nucleus has an attraction with this electron and these electrons. But due to the presence of this core electrons, there is a difference in the nuclear charge. 
it means that whatever attraction these new electrons are feeling because of the proton it will actually decrease because of these core electrons next is effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge is again due to the shielding effect because these electrons are actually feeling a different nuclear charge it is actually equal to number of protons minus the number of core electrons if we want to calculate the effective nuclear charge for these outermost electrons it would be number of protons which is 8 minus number of core electrons which is 2 so the effective nuclear charge will be plus 6 and it will not be plus 8 so these are some of the factors which affect the properties of the elements. I'll be discussing all the properties based on these four factors. Let's start with the first property which is atomic radius. So atomic radius as the name says it is actually the radius of an atom. So here you will see that elements are actually denoted by circles. So these circles are giving you an idea that how the radius is changing. Here you will see that in the columns the atomic radius is increasing and if I talk about the sorry, rows you will see that the atomic radius is actually decreasing with the elements so if i'm talking about the columns the radius atomic radius is increasing so for hydrogen the electronic configuration is 1s1 so the number of orbit orbits is 1 for hydrogen but lithium the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s1 so in total there are two orbits so that is why these two orbits will occupy more space and the size would become a bit bigger sodium has 11 electrons so the electronic configuration would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 so in total it has three orbits so here you will see that the size has again increased like this the number of orbits is increasing so that is why the atomic radius is also increasing if i talk about the rows so here lithium beryllium and then on the p block it is boron and carbon so for lithium the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s1 so the number of electrons is 3 and the number of protons is 3 beryllium has number of electrons 4 and the protons is also 4 so here the number of protons has increased the attraction between them would also increase. So that is why size of beryllium would be smaller than lithium. Further moving to boron, boron has 5 electrons and 5 protons. So again, the size would decrease further. And similarly for carbon. Let me tell you about the ionic radius. As the name tells, ionic radius is the radius of the ion. So if we want to compare the atomic radius and ionic radius, let's see. For this is sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons and if it loses one electron, it becomes sodium positive. Now here for sodium atom, it has 11 protons and 11 electrons. But for sodium ion, that is sodium positive ion, it has 11 protons and 10 electrons. So now the number of electrons is less than the number of protons. So the attraction, the electrons would be feeling will be more. And that is why the size of the ion would actually decrease. So that is why the positively charged ions size is smaller than the atomic radius of the elements it is same for the magnesium also magnesium atom is bigger than the magnesium ion now let me tell you about the negative ions or anions so for if i'm talking about fluorine fluorine has nine electrons and nine protons but if it takes one electron it becomes fluoride ion f negative ion now this fluoride ion has nine protons and ten electrons 
now the number of protons is lesser than the number of electrons so that is why the attraction which is actually which should be actually felt by the electrons it would not be that much strong because the coming electron will actually increase the repulsion between all of the electrons and this repulsion will actually lead to increase in the size so that is why the negatively charged ion size is bigger than the atom itself same is the case for the chloride ion positively charged ions is smaller than corresponding uh, atom and the negatively charged ions are always bigger than the corresponding atoms now let's talk about the ionic radii for the isoelectronic series isoelectronic series is a series in which all the elements are having this different number of protons but same number of electrons so we need to keep one thing in mind that the cations are always smaller than the neutral atom and the anions are always larger than the neutral atom so let's see the series in which we are going from nitrogen to aluminium so the nitrogen atom has changed to nitrogen ion by gaining 3 electrons and here aluminium has actually lost 3 electrons to become aluminium 3 plus ions so all these ions are having 10 electrons but they are having different number of protons so if we are talking about nitrogen nitrogen has 7 protons and the aluminum ion has 13 protons so for aluminum ion there are more number of protons than the nitrogen so that is why there will be more coulomb's force between the protons and electrons so that will actually lead to decrease in the size same we can uh, compare the size with the magnesium ion sodium ion fluoride ion oxygen ion and the nitrogen ion for all these ions as we are moving from left to right the number of protons are actually increasing and the number of electrons are remaining same so the coulomb's force would be maximum for the aluminum ion and it would be minimum for the nitrogen ion the second property which is ionization energy so in brief i can tell you that ionization energy is the energy which is required to remove the outermost electrons so here you can see the periodic table along with that the values of the ionization energy of each elements are given now here when we see the first group we can see that the ionization energy values is actually decreasing as we are moving down the group it is because again of the size of the atom as we move down the group the size of the atom increases and that is why the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electrons decreases and it becomes easy for the uh, electrons to be removed so as we are moving down the group the ionization energy values goes on decreasing so now we know that ionization energy values actually depends on the size of the atoms so when we move across the period the size of the atom goes on decreasing and that is why ionization energy value should increase let's see for lithium and beryllium for beryllium has higher ionization energy value than lithium this is because of the decrease in the size but when we are moving from beryllium to boron this boron has lesser ionization energy then beryllium similarly from boron to nitrogen the ionization energy value has again increased because of decrease in size but from nitrogen to oxygen again there is decrease in ionization energy value so there is not a proper trend which is followed by elements of a certain period so let's see what is the reason for this so if we see the electronic configurations of some of the elements of second period we can see that for the lithium the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s1 so if we remove this 2s electrons it becomes 1s2 which is fully filled orbitals and this makes lithium very much stable see the electronic configuration of beryllium it is 1s2 2s2 so if we remove this 2s electron earlier it was fully filled orbitals but now it will become half filled orbital so this will make beryllium very much unstable and that is why the ionization energy value has increased 
but if we compare between the beryllium and boron for boron the ionization energy is lesser because if we remove this 2p electron from boron we will be left with 1s2 2s2 which is very stable from boron to nitrogen the ionization energy value is increasing because the size goes on decreasing now again for oxygen there is a dip in ionization energy this is because for oxygen the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p4 so if we remove this p electron we will be left with 2p3 which is half filled 2p orbital and that is why it is very stable now again when we are moving from oxygen to neon the ionization energy value goes on increasing because of decrease in the size from oxygen to neon so this similar trend is also observed in the third period and so on let's see the third property which is electron affinity so electron affinity is basically opposite of ionization energy it is the amount of energy released when the ele electron is attached to a neutral atom or molecule so here we can see that when the oxygen atom is gaining the electron it changes into o negative and the energy is released which is 142 kilojoules so in general we can say that x gaseous plus electron is giving x negative gaseous and the energy is being released so if we talk about the trend of the electron affinity in the periodic table the electron affinity generally decreases as we move down the group because each atom is larger than the atom above it this means that an added electron is further away from the atom's nucleus compared with its position in the smaller atom with a larger distance between the negatively charged electron and the positively charged nucleus the force of attraction is relatively weaker and therefore the electron affinity goes on decreasing as we move down the group but if we i am talking about the electron affinity across the period the atom size goes on decreasing and that is why the atoms being smaller the forces of of attraction becomes stronger so this causes the electron to move closer to the nucleus and this increases the electron affinity as we move from left to right across a period so this was about the electron affinity now let's talk about the fourth property which is the last property that is electronegativity so electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract electrons towards itself so if i am talking about hydrogen fluoride it is composed of hydrogen and fluorine atoms so fluorine has more electronegativity than the hydrogen this means that when a bond is formed between hydrogen and fluorine fluorine tends to attract the uh, bonded pair of electrons towards itself so this is called electronegativity now let's see how the electronegativity changes as we move down the group and across the period as we move down the group the electronegativity decreases and this is because of the increase in the atomic number down a group there is increased distance between the valence electrons and the nucleus or you can say the atomic radius goes on increasing as we move down the group and that is why electronegativity decreases but if we are talking across the period the electronegativity increases this is because of the elements which are present on the extreme left and extreme right of the periodic table these extreme left elements of the periodic table these tend to lose the electrons to attain the noble gas configuration but these elements towards the right hand side of the periodic table these try to gain the electrons to attain the noble gas configuration and become stable so that is why these elements uh, attract electrons towards itself and try to become more stable so that is why electronegativity increases as we move across the period the learning objective of the topic was explain the relationship between trends in atomic properties of elements and electronic structure and periodicity so in this video i talked about what is periodicity i told about the four properties that is atomic radius ionization energy electron affinity and electronegativity i told you how the trends of these properties keeps on changing as we are moving along the group or along the period and how they are linked to the electronic structure of the atom 
please like and subscribe to the channel Log IOTA and press the bell icon.